Within the autonomic nervous system, there are two major divisions called the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions. And the distinction between these two comes from um, looking at where the neurons originate from. So if we're talking about the preganglionic pre-ganglionic neurons, where do they come from? Where do they branch off from the central nervous system at? So if we just take a look at this representation of the spinal cord here, up here would be the brain and the spinal cord down below. And the sections in the middle that are highlighted in red, these are where the neurons of the sympathetic division originate from. Um, above that, in blue up here and down here as well, uh, we have some sections highlighted in blue, and those are where the neurons of the parasympathetic division originate from. And we'll be getting into more of the distinctions between these two divisions as we go, as we go in this chapter, um, but this is really the key difference is where are the neurons originating from. I'd like to focus in on the sympathetic division for just a minute. Let's take a look at the structure, a close-up of the structure in this region of the spinal cord, just to see how things are arranged. So looking at this image right here, we can see um, in yellow right here, this would be the spinal cord. So that's part of the central nervous system. And looking at that spinal cord, we can see there are both dorsal and ventral roots. I'm kind of circling them right here, dorsal and ventral roots. And then there's a spinal nerve that extends off to the left over here. So um, in general, most sympathetic nerve fibers do actually separate from the somatic nerve fibers, and then they end up synapsing in this chain of ganglia that exists along the spinal cord, um, parallel to the spinal cord. So this right here that I'm hovering over with my laser pointer, this is, um, here's one ganglia, here's another ganglia, here's another ganglia. These are the ganglia of the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. And there are two of these chains of ganglia. There's one over here on this side. There's another one over here on this side. We can just barely see it. So there are two of these chains that parallel the spinal cord. And one of the interesting things just about how everything is so interconnected here in the autonomic nervous system, this is going to be very helpful for allowing um, whole sets of organs to be activated all at once or stimulated all at once. So for example, uh, we're gonna be talking about the fight or flight response where like your adrenaline gets going and, and you can react to something very quickly and very effectively. That involves a lot of different organs being sort of upregulated, um, including your heart rate that goes up right away. Um, the way that, that all of that can be coordinated is through this um, structural relationship within the, the autonomic nervous system. The fact that the sympathetic division is so interconnected means that we can activate a lot of things all at once. So coming back to this schematic here, just looking at what does the sympathetic division actually innervate? So all of these sympathetic neurons, um, they end up synapsing. Remember we have a preganglionic neuron and then a postganglionic neuron. On this slide, the preganglionic neuron is represented with solid lines and the postganglionic neurons are represented with dashed lines. So um, postganglionic neurons end up going and innervating many different organs. If we just follow where all of these go to, lots of different organs throughout the body are inter innervated by the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. Interestingly, a lot of those same organs are also innervated by the parasympathetic division. So if we just follow, right, follow the blue lines this time, a lot of these end up going to, in fact, the same organs. So there's a lot of overlap between these two different divisions, um, but these two different divisions will allow different things to happen in those organs. So sometimes we want to rev things up, other times we want to calm them down. And that's one of the big differences between what these two divisions do. You'll notice a lot of the, for the parasympathetic fibers, a lot of the ganglia exist um, at a lot of the ganglia exist either right next to the organ, the target organ, or even inside of the target organ that's being innervated. So like right here, here's the preganglionic neuron, here's the postganglionic neuron. That ganglia actually exists within the target organ itself. So a little bit different structure for the ganglia in the parasympathetic division. 
Looking at the cranial nerves up here, I want to draw your attention to this one specifically, cranial nerve 10. Um, this is a very important one. The cranial nerve 10, this includes nuclei. Um, there are nuclei in the medulla oblongata, and those nuclei end up leading to what's called the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is really important. The vagus nerve goes and innervates lots of different body organs, visceral organs throughout the body. And in fact, that vagus nerve provides the major parasympathetic innervation um, that we're gonna be coming across. So the postganglionic neurons, again, are located within the innervated organs. That's true pretty much for all of these. Here's the, the liver. Um, down here is the kidney the intestines, the heart. Okay, so all of those end up getting innervated by the vagus nerve. And I have one more picture just to show you of that vagus nerve, which again is coming from um, cranial nerve number 10 up here. Okay, so all these branches off to the different organs. Um, the vagus nerve is, is the nerve that is branching off to all of those different visceral organs. And you can see in yellow is the vagus nerve, all these different organs that it innervates and allows control of.